creating a new series on my YouTube channel called Air Guns for Dummies. Each video is gonna be about a certain topic and hopefully they'll address some of the stuff that we take for granted, at least the guys that have been doing this for a while. And these videos are really meant to help tutor and instruct new people getting into the hobby on how to do various things like fill air guns. And that's the subject we're doing today. I get a lot of calls. People are calling me for help on my on my business line and asking me some very basic stuff about filling guns. I'm always willing to take a call and have a conversation with someone, but that being said, I think the best way to address this sometimes is by a video demonstration. So in this video, I'm gonna cover two topics. The first topic is how to fill your air gun, and the second is how to filter your air. Now, both of these topics are hotly debated online, especially on online forums, Facebook, YouTube, you name it. But I do want to state that this video is just a footstool for you to do more research and hopefully spend your money a lot wiser than I did when I began. I'm only burning my half. Okay, so you bought your first air gun and you want to know how to fill it. There's three primary ways to fill an air gun. You can use a hand pump, a compressor, or a tank. Now each of these has some drawbacks and benefits and we're going to go over all three. Now the first method to fill your air gun is a hand pump. And hand pumps, as they sound, are physical because you are hand pumping, hand filling your air gun. Push it out! <laughs> There's a lot of brands out there, and I'm not gonna name them all, but obviously probably the most known brand out there is the Hill Hand Pump. They're made out of Sheffield, England. They're really nice. Uh, you can rebuild them, and most, most hand pumps you can rebuild. Like air guns, the failure points are usually O-rings. And I'm gonna show you one I have right now. So most of the hand pumps on the market are gonna look something like this, uh, whether it's a Hill or an Off brand or some Chinese brand. This one is an AGH brand hand pump. I retail this one. This is kind of a cheap Chinese option for people that don't wanna spend a lot of money. But usually they have three or four stages and pump up to about 4,500 PSI. Now usually you see a lot of brands out there market themselves as capable of, this one says uh, 5,500 or 6,000 6, PSI can fill to. You can't actually fill that high. Most of them will kind of become too physically demanding after about 4,000 PSI, so usually you won't be able to fill the really, really high pressure guns with a hand pump. Now I'm gonna go over some of the basic features here. There's obviously the handles, you have your shaft, you push down and it's going to be compressing the air. You have a bleed right here and you have your gauge right here. And then you have your hose with your eight millimeter foster quick disconnect. Any kind of hand pump that you get, whether it's a really nice one like a Hill from, from England or a Chinese one like this one, the failure point's always gonna be an O-ring. So these do have to be rebuilt. And when you do open these up, they are pretty gnarly inside. Usually if you've used it for a year, if I use this day in, day out in Florida, after a year, it's gonna look really gnarly inside. And so these things have a life span that's limited. And like all things made by man, they eventually do break. <laughs> Oh my God. But if you clean them out pretty well and maintain the O-rings, they can last a good while. You know, it goes without saying because there's so much condensation and the heat and the friction occurring inside of this, it's just a lot of wear and tear on the parts. Now you might be thinking to yourself, wow, Tristan has a lot of negative opinions about hand pumps. And while I do have a lot of negative opinions about hand pumps built upon experience, I do think there is a place for hand pumps for every air gunner out there. And that place is as a backup. If you have a compressor that breaks down, it's really nice to have a hand pump in your closet that you can pull out and fill your gun. Likewise, if your tank is out of air and for some reason the scuba shop that you usually fill out is not open or the firehouse that you fill at is off fighting a fire or something like that, you can't fill your tank, it's really nice to have a backup. I do wanna state before we go to compressors and air tanks that hand pumps are more effective with smaller tanks. What do I mean by that? If you have a 213cc tank on a Talon P, it's gonna be very easy to fill with a hand pump, especially as a backup. But if you have a 700cc bottle on the bottom of BRK Ghost, a hand pump is not ideal, to say the least.
Okay, so we've gone over the first method, which is a hand pump. Now we're moving on to the second method, which is a compressor. And I've chosen this compressor made by GX Pump because it's a rather popular one on Amazon. Uh, a lot of new air gunners buy the cheapest compressors possible, which I'll say some more things about that in a moment. But I do want to say that this one's probably one of the most bought ones on Amazon. I've used it for six months. I've put it through a lot of toil and it's worked pretty well. It broke once. You maniacs! You blew it up! Like everything in air guns, usually when something breaks, it means an O-ring failed. So I did open it up and I replaced the O-ring and put it back together and it works. Uh, it has a bleed right here, it has an on and off. It has a DC-12 volt right here on this side if you want to connect it to your car. And on this side, it's the AC. Here's the plug, very, very basic. And obviously you have the cord with eight millimeter Foster Quick Disconnect on the end there. I do want to state before I give you my spiel on compressors that if you buy a cheap compressor like this one on Amazon, the main thing you can do to get a long life out of it is not to overheat it. Do not run this a long time. And especially don't fill tanks that are really large in volume. On this model it says do not exceed 75 degrees and to make sure to turn the system off before it hits that temperature. So now to my compressor spiel. If you can afford it, skip a small compressor like this and move all the way to an Omega compressor or a Daystate compressor. What's nice about those larger compressors is A, they're much more serviceable and they're really high quality, so they last usually a lot longer. And more importantly, they can compress a lot more air. So if you have a carbon fiber tank or if you're going to buy one in the future, you can compress air for that tank. Whereas a unit like this is meant really to compress air directly to an air gun with the exception of a filter, um, they just can't compress the volume needed to go inside of a large tank like a 75 cubic foot tank. So that's something to keep in mind if you do want to get a tank in the future. This kind of compressor cannot fill those tanks. So if you do want to get a tank in the future, go ahead and save your money for the bigger and better compressors that are out there on the market. So now we're moving on to the third option, which is a tank. This is a 75 cubic foot carbon fiber tank made by Omega. It's retailed by AOA, myself, and other retailers across the United States. This is a great tank for air gunners, especially new air gunners. Uh, it's really nice method because I just take it to a local paintball retailer and they fill it with filtered air, it's dry air, it's breathable air, and it's the best option for me. It's the only way I fill my air guns and I really, really like using this because it requires no effort on my part and no maintenance on my part other than just driving and having it filled. That's the only downside to it is actually going somewhere and relying on someone else to fill it. But the, that said, the reason most people don't go this option to begin with, but usually end up with this option is because the cost, the initial cost of an air tank like this is usually between $500 and $700. And it's kind of a bigger bill than a small compressor or a hand pump. But if you are serious about air gunning and you have an ability to fill in your area, I would definitely, definitely recommend a 75 cubic foot tank like this, or maybe even a 100 cubic foot tank. Um, they're just really nice. They hold a lot of air. A tank like this can fill a BRK Ghost like 20 or 30 times before needing to be refilled. So you get a lot of shots out of one fill. So again, this is my preferred method. Different air gun tanks will have different manifolds on the top. Sometimes they have one gauge like this one does to show the pressure in line on the hose actually filling the gun. Sometimes they have a second gauge showing the pressure of the tank itself. This one has a single one and then they all have this little bleed valve right here and that's so that when a cord is filled with air, like this one is, you simply press this when you want to release it off the gun. So that bleeds out the air from the cord so you can safely disconnect it from your rifle. All right, now moving on to the second topic, which is how to filter your air. Obviously there's lots of different filters out there. There's larger filters like the Tuxing that's available on Amazon, as well as the small little filters like this on Amazon and places like Pyramid Air. And I'm going to give you a quick rundown on what you should look for for hand pumps as well as compressors or even using a compressor to fill a large carbon fiber tank. So let's get going. All right guys, so if you're gonna be using a hand pump, just don't rely on the small filters that are provided with many of these companies. 
they're just not sufficient to remove the condensate moisture, the condensed moisture in the pumping process. Make sure to be using a filter that's a little larger like the one shown here. Now what you don't want to do is you don't want to use a larger filter like this gold tuxing on a hand pump because if I want to get too pressure to fill an air gun without any filter at all, it might take me about five pumps to get the line pressurized to start filling the air gun. Now, if I have that small silver filter, for example, it might take me five or six more pumps before the pressure is met inside that filter before it starts actually going into the gun. So if you are hand pumping, my recommendation is to use a smaller unit like this versus a larger compressor to tank filter like this simply because if you have this in line with your hand pump you might have to do 100 150 strokes before you actually get it pressurized whereas this might be only 10 pumps so something to keep in mind you want to minimize the heat in the shaft of the pump itself the hand pump because the more heat that's in there the hotter your air is going to be and the more moisture is going to carry to your gun so you want to keep your pump your hand pump nice and cool and the way to do that is try to minimize the total amount of strokes that you have to do so my pro tip for you is a small filter for the hand pump all right guys so we've come full circle back to the compressor but now we're talking about filtering air for compressors to your air guns and the thing I'm going to say about this is that the same logic that applies to the hand pump applies to compressors as well and that is that hot air will carry the moisture to your air gun so the thing that you need to do is to keep this unit cool and to run it as little as possible so some of the same logic with a larger filter like this will apply to a compressor as it does to a hand pump and that's why a larger compressor like a Daystate or an Omega can actually utilize a filter like this and give you drier, cleaner air because it has the ability volumetrically to fill this with ease versus this unit. It might take you a while to fill a filter like this. You might have to turn it on and off three or four times. So my recommendation for a smaller compressor kind of depends on where you live. If you live in a very dry area, I think you can get away with a very small inline filter like this, maybe two of them, but for very wet areas and you're filling an air gun, I do recommend a larger filter of some kind, whether that's a Tuxing or an Omega, but like I said, you're going to have to turn it on, off and on, off and on a few times just to pressurize this before you pressurize your air gun. So that's something to think about. So now we've come full circle on why I gave that spiel earlier about why it's worthwhile to save your money for an Omega or a Daystate compressor because they can fill the volume necessary in one fill to pressurize this as well as a bottle or a gun that you're filling without stopping and going, stopping and going because they're usually water cooled and oil lubed versus this, this is air cooled. So one is just intrinsically much more reliable and that's the, the water cooled and oil lubed compressors. So that being said, um, something to think about. Um, if you are going to use a smaller unit like this, you can use a larger filter. If you're in a drier area and you have a small compressor like this, you can get away with a small filter like this. So something to think about. So you can see how dirty this filter is. And so my recommendation is to check often and replace often and you usually will have some extra filters that you'll be supplied with. So I did want to communicate really quickly this hack I discovered. If you don't want to buy the replacement filters for your inline filter, you can go ahead and buy these microfiber dense foam pads at Home Depot and Walmart, places like that. These are cleaning pads, but they're actually dense microfiber foam. And if you cut them larger than the original OEM filter and you shove it in there, I've done side-by-side -side comparison tests and I've discovered that these hold just as much water as the, the original OEM filters that they usually come with. So it's just a good hack. I'm not saying you have to do it. I'm just saying that if you're in a, a pinch or you just don't want to buy any more, you're a cheap, cheapo like me, you can use these microfiber pads and they seem to work pretty, pretty dang good. One last note on the smaller filters is none of these have the hydroscopic beads that you use on the bigger filter like a Tuxing or an Omega filter. They all seem to be using the smaller microfiber or cotton based filters. So just something to be aware of is that if you want 
some kind of uh, molecular sheave that will take out the moisture. You're not gonna get that in any of these smaller units. These are only the microfiber or the con base filters that you'll be inserting. All right, so now for a larger inline filter. This one again is a tuxing. I'm using this because it's a really popular one for air gunners. This is ideally between a compressor and a tank or a compressor and an air gun, and it has a different type medium. So if you buy the Tuxing brand filter online, this is what the cartridge looks like from the outside. So this is the stuff that I use when I use a compressor and the Tuxing filter to fill an air gun. And I have checked numerous times inside both a uh, tube and a bottle to make sure that there is no moisture, just kind of to see if I've ever introduced any elements of moisture into my air guns. I haven't found any yet. And so this process to me seems pretty pretty good and again I check often and replace often. Now that said I don't have to use these anymore or the filter or a compressor because 99.9% .9 of the time what I use is my carbon fiber tank. It's dry air, it's really easy to do and I don't have to mess around with filters or compressors or hand pumps or any of this other stuff. So now we're kind of at the end of this video where we're determining what kind of fill source that you want to have for your air gun and my recommendation is that you look around your area and see if you have a local paintball retailer or a scuba shop that can fill up to 4500 psi or a firehouse that's willing to fill your tank if you have any of those my recommendation my strong recommendation is that you buy a carbon fiber tank it's easier it's less stress you're not dealing with moisture it's the way to go if you can afford it. Now, mind you, they're a little expensive. They're like between 500 and 700 bucks, but you just want it, trust me. If that option is available to you, I recommend not the little small shoebox compressor on Amazon. Save your money, try to buy an Omega or a Daystate compressor. It's gonna be worth it. It's gonna last a lot longer. It's gonna keep cooler and you can also fill things like your gun or your larger tank, carbon fiber tank, if you end up buying one in one go and you can utilize larger filters like the Tuxing filter or other brands. Uh, if you can't afford that and you can get a small shoebox compressor, the filtration system that you're going to be using kind of depends on where you live. If you live in a place like Florida, you have to use the big filter because those little filters will still get moisture through to your air gun. If you can't afford a small compressor like that one or a larger compressor like an Omega Trail Charger or one of the Day State compressors like the 110 or you can't afford a tank, then yes, a hand pump can get you started, but there is some limitations there. Obviously, the bigger the air reservoir on your air gun, the more difficult it is to actually fill because you're doing it physically, right? So the more volume makes it more difficult, the more strokes that you have to, to do to fill your tank. So keep that in mind. I really think of hand pumps as the last resort, like if you're in the middle of nowhere and you're shooting with your friends and everything else has either broken or ran out of air, then yes, use a hand pump. I've seen a lot of debates online, people saying that they've used hand pumps for 20 years, never ran into a problem. I've seen a lot of problems introduced by the use of hand pumps. And usually when I open up an air gun that I've seen that is replete with like all kinds of nasty, like grime in the inside and the valves all messed up, the thing I always know is that person used a hand pump. So I've seen firsthand a lot of problems caused by hand pumps, the moisture from the use of hand pumps. So if you're gonna use a hand pump, you're kind of in a paradoxical situation because you do wanna use filtration, but you don't wanna use a massive filter. And the reason why is ironically, I guess you could say is if you use a massive filter with a hand pump, the more strokes you're gonna to have to do on the pump itself and the more strokes it's going to get the shaft hotter, the air is gonna be hotter and you're actually gonna push in more water molecules into the filter and potentially the gun too. So I really think that hand pumps are a, kind of a last resort, a backup option. And in that backup option, just use a small filter like this and make sure to change the cartridge often uh, by checking often. All right guys, so we talked about two topics in this video. We talked about firstly, what method we use to fill our air guns, whether that's a 
hand pump a compressor or a tank. And then secondly, we talked about how to properly filter that air. And so I hope this video at the very least will encourage you to do your own research and hopefully save a dime or two before investing in the various pumps and filters and compressors that you might buy in the future. And again, my recommendation, if I could give any recommendation to a new air gunner or maybe even someone that hasn't done it yet is buy a tank. It just saves a lot of money. Obviously, everyone has a little bit of a different opinion. So uh, make sure to leave a comment below. How do you fill your air gun and how do you filter your air? Big shout out to Air Guns of Arizona for making this video happen. If you're interested in a Hill hand pump made in Sheffield, England, they've got it in stock. If you're interested in an Omega trail charger, they have them in stock, or a Omega carbon fiber tank, they have them in stock. I like to say if you want to fill your air guns, but you need to buy some equipment to do that, make sure to check out airgunsverizona.com. And you can also help me out by going to my website, atlasairguns.com. I do have tanks and hand pumps in stock. See you guys next time.